fashion insider friends. What is up? This is the Fashion Crimes Podcast, where I cover all things fashion, style, shopping, style inspiration, and interview incredible small business owners who are changing the fashion industry for the better. Yes, I'm the best friend you never knew you needed and the poster child for fashion over 40. And I mean, way after 40. Say it with me. Fashion and style are your friends, not your enemies. I'm Holly Cates, your favorite personal stylist, and let's keep it real, the only Holly you need to know. Turn it up, because I got a lot to say, and I am super stoked you're here. What is up? Hello, and how's it going? My name is Holly Cates. This is the Fashion Crimes Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us today. All I have to say is we have a big FD in the house. Needs no introduction. I am so excited. All I have to say is she's back. What up, Noli? I like to say I'm back by not so popular demand. (laughs) Oh my God. Talk about a pity interview. Nolan felt so bad for me. I said, I really want to talk about bags. He goes, I'll do it. Loving this journey for me. I honestly have to say, I miss this a little bit. You know, this insanity of my, the insanity of my new New York life has consumed me. But this is, if this just feels right, maybe I need to come back for a recurring handbag segment. It's just feels right. Just feels right. It does. You have been a lady about town. I mean, I know I got back from our Basel 12 hours ago. (laughs) We don't even have time to go over all the events. You and I, we went and Allison, we went to go see Probable Garung speak. Amazeballs. Major. And we're seeing Brandon Maxwell next week. We're seeing Brandon Maxwell next week because Nolan has friends in high places. That's all I have to say. I like to say sometimes, and sometimes I have high friends in high places. (laughs) We're going to um, the Proenza sample sale that's coming up. We're doing all, I mean, it's, we what? we just did the most at Art Basel. I did all the fashion parties. You wore vintage YSL. It was a moment. Oh my God. It was a big fashion moment for me. That's all I have to say. Even though it was, I was a bit, there. Yeah, it was monumental. I am so grateful you came back. I wanted to come to you because let's keep it real. My clients want bags for Christmas. They want bags. They need guidance. It's like hair and makeup, right? Like I can point you in the right direction. Don't know it the way you know it. Let's keep it real. So I really wanted to use your expertise and figure out, help people figure out if they're just beginning or maybe they want to trade up or maybe they're in the market for like a really nice bag. The bag Yoda, would you please enlighten us on what is the most common misconception if somebody is starting out and looking at prices of any kind of bag, what is the most common misperception about owning a nice bag? I think there are a couple. The first being, I know a lot of people who have really amazing bags that are very expensive and they buy them and they wear them maybe once a year because they're always sort of save them for best. And I don't really believe in saving things for best because you just never know. You could get hit by a bus tomorrow. Of course, there are exceptions. You know, if you you know, how many times are you going to wear a black tuxedo jacket? You know what I mean? You're not going to wear it every day and you might still want to invest in a nice one. But if you're going to be spending a lot of money on a bag, particularly if it's the first time, whatever that amount is to you, everyone's budget is different. If you're spending what feels like a lot of money to you on a handbag, it's something you should use and enjoy. Beautiful things are meant to be used. There are exceptions. You have a beautiful Hermes bag that you use relatively sparingly, but it also wasn't the first nice bag you've bought. It is the nicest bag I have. It is. The, it's the nicest bag you have, but it wasn't the first. You had your bases covered before you bought that bag. And you bought it in a, in a leather that's very, very rare and very, very sought after. And so it's, it's you know, relatively delicate. It's, you're not going to wear it out in a rainstorm and you don't wear right. it all the time. But when you do, it still does have a special meaning. And there are things in my closet that I wear that I, when I wear them, you know, I wear them very sparingly, but they have a special meaning. But I think bags are a practical purchase for the most part. And so I think that the saving for best sort of mentality, it's kind of a waste to me. You know, why spend the money if it's just going to sit in your closet and not see the light of day and bring you joy when you use it? First of all, you're a coat whore, not a Coke whore, C-O-A-T whore with your coats and your jackets. Now, And you're in, in addition to that, you are a bag whore. Let's call it what it is. I am a bag whore. Let's kind of start at a moderate price point for someone's like, 
who's carrying around something basic, let's just call it Kate Spade or something not designer. And they're like, you know what? I want to level up. No one sent me like 1500 pictures. So I'm trying to follow along. Let's figure out what's the good first step. A good first step for me is like, listen, there are amazing bags at every price point. Now, I'm not going to go out and tell you to buy a pleather bag. I say buy the best that you can afford when it comes to bags. I am of the belief that aside from your jewelry, the bag should be the most expensive thing you're wearing most of the time. Interesting. Okay. I'm a little bit of a different story now because my lifestyle has changed a little bit and I do wear a bag every day, but I really am chewing from the office and sometimes I leave my bag, whatever. So I do buy nice clothing, but bags to me is always going to be the first place I put my money because they're the most versatile and you do use them the most, right? So my first piece of advice is always buy the best that you can afford and buy less. You know, you don't need 85 bags. I think my mother owns maybe six handbags, maybe seven. I think that is such a good point. You're not buying better because you're going to fucking TJ Maxx and buying out all the fucking bags they have. Right. I mean, if it's one thing, if you're buying one handbag and you're buying it, you know, for a hundred dollars and that's what you want to spend on a handbag, great. But you shouldn't be buying eight handbags at a hundred dollars at once. Because that's just stupid because you could be buying one $800 handbag or two $400 handbags and be getting much better quality, much better look. And actually a very dear friend of mine, my friend Jennifer, who is probably the most effortlessly chic woman I know. She is so fabulous. And Holly, you know her, you adore her. Uh, She is fabulous. One of my favorite humans in the entire world. Just sent me an article actually today uh, that was an old write-up that Elsa Scaparelli gave an interview. And it said something along the lines of cheapness is always apparent. Mm. So buy less, but it was the moral of the was buy less, but buy better. If you can only afford to buy one good thing, buy a good suit, then buy one good dress, then buy one good coat. Right. And right. eventually, you know, you build a, a wardrobe. And so I think, yeah, I think my mother has maybe six or seven handbags and, you know, like she has a small black bag, you know, all the little basics that you need, but she doesn't buy a million handbags. Mind you, I buy all her handbags, but <laughs> that's not the more, that's not the point. Right. If you're starting at a lower price point, I really do. I do love Kate Spade bags. I actually think they're very cute, especially recently. I think they've been doing some fun things. But uh, I find, especially with Kate Spade, I don't find the quality to quite match the price point all the time. I know that they make bags specifically for TJ Maxx and for the outlets. When I feel those bags, I don't feel a massive difference between that and those that are full price from Kate Spade. Right. Because a lot of their bags are, you know, 378, 398, 498, you know, and that's not a small amount of money, right? And so in that price point, for me, you sort of have two options. One is to buy new and I try to find smaller brands that have really great quality. Or you know me, I love secondhand. I love the real real. I love vintage. And I always look there before I look new for anything. And so for five hundred dollars on the real real. Very good advice. Yeah, for five hundred dollars in the real world, you can find maybe a, a Gucci bag that's maybe ten years old or vintage at this point, or an older style Chloe bag or Mulberry bag or Prada bag. But it's so phenomenally made, and you're getting an incredible bag for an incredible price. But if you want something new and shiny, because sometimes you want new and shiny, everyone loves something new. My favorite bag brands in the contemporary area right now. Yeah, what's the craze right now? What's what's the steez right now? Okay, Telfar bags are all the rage. I hate them. Please explain this to me. I still don't get it. Telfar is a bag found, it's a brand founded in New York um, by this designer, Telfar Clements, who's incredibly cool. And his signature bag is a tote bag, and it has two short handles and two very long handles. And it comes in three sizes, a mini, a medium, and a large. The mini is tiny. You can barely fit a phone in it. The medium is a goodish everyday size. The large is huge. You could fit a small child in there. (laughs) And they're a relatively friendly price point. I want to say they're like $198, $258, and $298 or something like that. The only issue I have with them is they're not real leather. They're like a, a, a blend of something, which I don't love personally. In New York City, everyone has one. And I never understood the hype. Every person has one. Because you couldn't get one for so long. You know, there was like a, they called it the Bushwick Birkin for a long time, <laughs> which is a neighborhood in Brooklyn and New York where a lot of hipsters live because it was the young, cool bag that everyone wanted. It was affordable. you right. It's relatively. Tough. Right. Exactly. But they started doing this thing called the bag security program where they open their website for 24 hours. They allow you to buy whatever bag you want. And then it gets shipped to you in like six months when they can actually make it. Wow. Interesting. Do you think the price is better because of that? No, it's not because they're afraid of making too many. It's because they cannot keep up with demand and people want the bag. 
Oh. Um, because they were doing drops where they drop at 10 a.m. They're sold out by 10.02. It's insane. It's insane. And it's, you know, the resale on them, you know, certain colors, you can triple your money on them. And I never understood it until I saw a really fabulous friend of mine with a shearling Lady Dior bag, which is a $5,000 bag. And it's fabulous. And I love shearling. It's very chic to me. I couldn't afford that Dior bag. So I saw the Ugg and Telfar collaboration, which I hate Uggs. Most of the time I hate Uggs. You don't hate it that much. But I saw the Ugg Telfar bag, which is a Telfar bag in shearling. I was able to get my hands on it almost before anybody else because they do it in limited runs. And I got it mine the second run, which was almost unheard of. I actually got mine through Nordstrom because Telfar doesn't sell directly through stores. They only sell direct to consumer. But because it was a collaboration with UGG, Nordstrom got a couple to sell from from UGG because they're one of UGG's largest wholesale accounts. So I got it. And it is the best bag I've purchased all year. I love it. It is so practical. Can I tell you, a very dear friend of mine gifted Nolan a very nice bag for his birthday a couple years ago. He likes to tell far better. Okay, Queen. Yes. <laughs> I have gorgeous, you know, I have a beautiful Fendi Solaria bag that was a gift from two of my very dear friends. You're welcome. Yes. Love you. <laughs> and I have a Dior book tote that was from Ugh, a client. Love it. That is one of my favorite bags. I still practicality wise, although there is like a fuck you factor to the Dior book tote that I love. That's like, yeah, this is like a ridiculously expensive fabric tote bag. But the Telfar is so ridiculously practical with those two long straps because they don't dig into your shoulder and you can wear them across your body if you need to. And the amount of times I get stopped, I get stopped with that bag more than I get stopped with anything else. Everyone's like, how did you get it? Where did you find it? That bag is so cute. Oh my God. Unusual with the Shearling Collabor. I see the, pl- they look so plastic to me, the regular ones, but yours yeah. is really different. So I, I can yeah. understand why you get stopped. Okay, let's move on. So Telfar is a very friend, a, a very, is very price friendly and I, I'm a huge fan of it. The other two. Yeah, let's talk about Coach. Coach I love. There's two bags from Coach that I love. They, they reissued their classic bag called the Willis, which is like the, they used to call it, I think, the stewardess bag or whatever. <laughs> Very cute. I think it's like $350, but it's a classic black bag. It looks expensive. It looks like you have like a little vintage bag and that you have really amazing taste. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's something that will never go out of style, ever. The other one from Coach that I love right now, I think it's called the Beat Bag. And it looks to me like a Chloe bag. It has like a gold chain and a short leather handle and a long leather strap and this like buckle clasp. It just looks very expensive. I saw someone carry it on the street and I was like, that's a fabulous bag. I wonder where that's from. I'm looking at a picture of it now. It looks really expensive. And when you think of Coach, you weren't alive yet, but all of those Coach bags from the 90s, the very plain one with that little twisty gold clasp, those are back in because this is new to this generation. But Coach is always coming out with new styles. I always send my customers there who want a moderate price because their prices are really good. Yeah. And I think the beat, I think is like 550, but you can usually get get them on sale. The other contemporary bags that I love, one of which, you know, you can tell the story of, but I love Stodd, um, Stodd. which is a great line. And they do really fabulous pieces at really, really reasonable price tags. And they did a tote bag that's color blocked. They either do it in color block leather or color block leather and suede. It's like a tote bag with black handles, a caramel leather and like a, a biscuit colored suede. It's gorgeous. I can't believe how much I like it. I'm. It's just to me, I'm like, oh, it's a cute, it's a brown bag, but I gave it as a gift and she did backflips. She loved this bag so much, but it's so cool and different because the color block is like different. So it's a little edgy and then one strap sticking out more than the other. So Stodd and all this will be in the show notes is a really good price point, very moderate. It's not going to kill you. It's not going to like make you roll over or anything. It's a pretty moderate price point. So I was very impressed with that bag. Of course, it was Nolan's idea to get it for her. Duh. And she loved it. Duh. Oh, I have one more contemporary bag that I love. It's from a French brand called Polen. And I first saw them on Instagram maybe three or four years ago. And they've now expanded their whole line. I want to say their median price points, like $375 to like $450. So they're not cheap, but they're mm-hmm. also not ridiculous. And the first time I felt one, I was blown away. The quality is absolutely fantastic. It's impeccable. And the brand has exploded. It's still not a mainstream brand. It's still one of those that if someone sees you carrying it, they're going to be like, oh my God, I love your bag. Where is it from? Right. Versus the Telfar, everyone's just like, I love your bag. I've seen it. 
Telfar is very popular. I'm loving this Loewe. I know that's a word jumping in price, but I'm loving this Loewe bag because it's like almost asymmetrical and the stitching is really cool. So it like goes diagonal, then it goes like, it, it's like all has different size triangles on it from the stitching. And that to me looks like a great size bag for a pretty decent price if you want to jump up in price. Right. I mean, listen, I think it's about... Four fifty for the my favorite bag from Poland. Let me look. It's called the Numero A uh, Mini, which is this little bag. Would you agree that for someone who is reassessing the bags they have, they need a boss lady bag, right? They need an everyday bag, which is you know you're running to the store, you're running with da da da, and then you need like a going out bag. Correct me if I'm wrong. I agree with you, one hundred percent. I think that. The first bag, you know, you should buy and invest in is the one that you use the most. Mm -hmm. And it, everybody's lifestyle is different. But like my fabulous friend, Jennifer, she has like an equation for buying handbags. She's a genius. She knows exactly what the measurements are of what she needs to bring with her at, on an everyday basis hmm. in cubic inches. <laughs> so when she, no, seriously. So when she looks at the dimensions of a handbag, like a lot of websites will list the dimensions. She knows when there's that math, whether her stuff will fit in it or not. There's never a let me buy it and see if all my stuff, if I can shove all my shit in it. And a lot of people who are going back to the office, if I catch you using a fucking bag from 15 years ago, I will find you. You deserve a decent work bag. Okay. I had to have a come to Jesus with a couple of my clients about this. She was like, oh my God, I've had this since high school. I was like, not anymore. Would you like me to burn it in front of you or behind you? Because if you are going to work, you need to look like either you're the boss, if you're the boss, or you're dressing for the job that you want to have. So it's important that you don't have an expensive bag, but you have a bag that will fit your laptop and fit all your stuff and na, na, na. So you're not embarrassed by, you know, some crappy bag that's damaged or it's cracking or the leather's cracking or the handles are bad. It just doesn't look good. It's like having your shoe shine. Absolutely. I think that also like, it, it depends on what quality of bag you buy, right? But like on the highest end, Hermes literally has a department of their company that is that specializes in repairing and fixing their bags because you buy one and you spend, you know, Hermes bags can now hit, you know, $80,000, which that's ridiculous, but it is what it is. You know, mm -hmm. They're fabulous. If you wear a bag out, you don't want to just go buy a new one. It's like wearing a really expensive watch. You want it to be fixed, maintained, right. and be able to use it again. Mm -hmm. And the expertise that these people have it it's just it's mind-blowing what they can do to fix the bag honestly but yeah i mean i personally believe in maintenance like buying expensive bags you need to be able to maintain them because they are designed to last for a very long time i mean that's why you see so many vintage bags that still look incredible from you know the more heritage more expensive brands i love a vintage bag let's talk about secondhand for a minute when somebody is looking for, let's just talk about my Chanel tote. And I'm not saying this to be like, oh, I have a Chanel tote. I mean, it was expensive, but it wasn't what it would have been, correct, in the store. No. So it was probably about $1,000 less than it would have been in the store. Because again, the one that you bought, that or the one that you got that you wanted was a very limited edition tote bag. And it was, you know, under retail, it was brand new with the tags. But it was secondhand. So that's the difference. It's that sometimes people get Well, yours stuff was actually brand new with the tags, but it was quite technically secondhand because someone else had bought it. So there was like a market. Uh, there was, you know, a difference in the price there. That's what I'm saying. These people buy these bags and sometimes they never use them. And like you said, sometimes people sell their bags to eat, right? Some people have crazy divorce, right? And they do it. I do know people who have had to sell Hermes bags to be able to pay like the retainer for a divorce attorney. I actually know someone who that was her experience where she had to sell her engagement ring, her handbags, everything. Mind you, it paid off. She got a huge divorce settlement. Good for her. Right. But on that scale, you can always get most of your money back out of the handbag, but that's irrelevant. But this bag is, I can bang it around. It's such a great travel tote. And that is a section for me that people might be interested in. If, if, if I, since I don't have a work tote or I, and I mean, I have a tote that I can use if I go to work. But this is my travel tote and it holds all my stuff. It holds my computer. It's got a couple of pockets in it and I can relatively stay organized and it looks chic and it doesn't show dirt. I love this bag because I can bang it around a little bit. We got another bag for me for, I think it was my birthday or Hanukkah last year 
that I needed for the summer. And I love this bag because it's structured. I can't remember the name of it, but it was much cheaper than that. So I kind of have like a high and a low. If I want to travel during the summer, I use that. If I want to travel in the winter, I use that. My black one, my black Chanel. So that is my sort of category. So you need to figure out for you what you need, right? If you need a going out bag, great. That If that's not where you want to spend the bulk of your money, that that's okay. Put your bulk of your money, like you said, in the bag that you use the most. I think that's very good advice. I believe in investing in you know, what you use the most. And so for me now, I do buy you know coats and shoes and I have to wear, I don't have to wear a blazer to the office, but I find that I feel best when I wear a blazer. So I wear blazers a lot. So I don't buy cheap ones because no, right. I'm, I want to be able to wear them long-term. You know, i <laughs> I just went through all the ones I wore in Miami. I'm like, this one was Dolce. That one was Versace. That one was, you know, my favorite Balmain one. But you get what you pay for. I mean, mind you, my Versace one was $19 and the Dolce one was probably (laughs) $35. But not the point. I invest in those. The queen of thrift. I do believe in investing in what you use the most and what, you know, makes you feel the best. Now, what would you say like on a wallet type situation? Because you and I fought about this. And I was kicking and screaming. You're like, you need a card holder. You need a card holder. And a card holder is just that. And sometimes men carry them. I had never known that a woman carried a card holder. Game changer. Tiny bags are here, right? Because you have one of your favorite bags is the little, it's called the Hermes Devil. And it's like a little baby tiny bag. Literally, if it's your keys, your wallet, your card holder, that's it. Right. If you have to rearrange your fucking wallet every time you change a bag, you're never going to change a bag because it's I such know. a tedious thing. It's such a pain in the ass. Listen, I know people who carry a, a huge wallet and a card holder inside the wallet. So that like they have all of their store credit cards and all their health insurance, all that shit in their bag. But then when they're going out at night or if they're just going to grab a coffee, they just take the card holder and they either hold it in their hand or they put it in a smaller bag because it lays flat. It's really simple. And it is the most practical thing in the world because I don't really ever carry cash. I only carry my credit card. So for me, it works. I'm a card holder convert. I will never use a wallet again. You did. You resisted for a long time. A minute. You did. And it was a game changer. My bestie from high school, not mentioning any names, I gave her a new wallet because it was bursting at the seams and it's still bursting at the seams because she carries around so much stuff. And I'm like, girl, we got to get you down. We got to get you down. But she's got cards and this and that and coupons and all kinds of stuff. It's just, it's overflowing. So going to a card holder makes you streamline. It just makes you do it. And you think you need all this other shit. You just don't need it. You just don't. Or you keep it in your glove box if you drive. Well, listen, if I leave you with one piece of advice, it's buy a fucking card holder. Yeah. On the bag front, I'm trying to think what the next price point is because price points are difficult, right? Because everybody's is different. But let's say you're going into like the slightly nicer what would you say, like fifteen hundred or like seven hundred to like two thousand? I would say the high end designer. You know, you're going, but, but like two thousand and under, which is unfortunately becoming a smaller and smaller category. Yeah, agreed. My two of my favorite bags ever: the Louis Vuitton Speedy. People say it's basic, but it's like the most original bag ever. It's the most practical bag ever, and it comes in every size, shape, and color you can think, or every size, material, and color you can think of. And it's like the bowling style bag right? in, you know, with two long handles, with two short handles and then a long cross body strap. And it comes in usually four sizes, usually three sizes, but they do make a fourth. It's like 25, 30, 35, and occasionally 40. And they come in the monogram canvas. They come in different colors. They now come in leathers. They come in Python. They come in all of these things. I think they're somewhere in the 13, 14 range in canvas, not leather. It's a great bag. They'll have it forever. Who doesn't love a Louis Vuitton bag? Is it bad to spend money on a Louis Vuitton bag when it's not leather? No, because in many ways, canvas is more durable. Oh, okay. Because it seems a lot to buy a bag from Louis Vuitton that is not real. Well, it is real. It's just not leather. You know, it has leather trim, but the canvas is, is, you know, it's still good canvas and it's made by Louis Vuitton, you know, for their bag. Do you think Louis Vuitton is is spread very thin? Do you like, I'm just saying in the South, every, most people have that because that's what they know, because that's the store that's in the mall. I don't see many people with a Prada bag or a Ferragamo or that's just what I see. Do you, I think it's the most popular, don't you? 
Uh, it is definitely the most popular. It's also, you know, the most valuable luxury brand on the planet, as far as I'm aware. Although Chanel maybe might have them with cosmetics. I can't remember. But yes, but there is an elegance to Louis Vuitton, real Louis Vuitton. And I'm not talking about wearing it with your yoga pants and a t-shirt. <laughs> I'm talking about, you know, the women who wear Louis Vuitton that I know are very chic women, and then with the greatest taste. And they're not just buying, you know, the goddamn never fold that awful tote bag. Oh. It's a be- I get it. But it's you're paying, fi- at this point, $1,500 for a bag that everyone has that's not that pretty. At least the Speedy, the Speedy has the history of being one of the, as being the most popular bag for Louis Vuitton. It's been around for 50 years, you know, whatever. I think it was first carried. I forget what, what, what um, I feel like it was Audrey Hepburn, but it might have been somebody else who first carried the Speedy. It was like a big deal. At least with that, it's a classic. They never fall. It's just a tote bag and it's just basic at times. You know, $1,500, buy something better. Uh, it just don't buy something everyone else has. But the women that I know who buy Louis Vuitton bags, you can get a great Louis Vuitton bag. Jennifer, my fabulous friend again, bought a, a Louis Vuitton bag in leather. It's Epi leather, which is one of their um, leathers that they have. That's totally under the radar. It doesn't say Louis Vuitton on it. Mm-hmm. It's like a bowling style bag. And I want to say she was seeing them in between the like seven and 900 range. They're exquisitely made. They're beautiful. They will last forever. And there's, it's subtle luxury. To me, that's very chic. If I see a woman wearing that bag, I think she, I automatically think she has good taste because it means she's bought something that she will have forever that she loves. And to me, that's the sign of a really smart shopper is buying something amazing that's long-term. And I think you, that was key. If you're going to be a smart shopper, Let's figure out what you can afford. Okay, kudos to you for wanting a new bag, A. B, let's figure out what you can afford and let's get the best bag, I think, for what you can afford, whether that's $200 or $2,000 or $12,000. Let's figure out what you can afford. There are so many other choices that like Mulberry and... Mulberry is one of my favorite bags. It's slightly lower on the higher end price point. It's a British brand that... You know, it was very popular in the 2000s. To me, they still make great bags. I love their bags. You know, I think it's part of me that, you know, wishes I was British. (laughs) But I love their bags. And another one is Loewe, which they're, one of my favorite bags of theirs is the one you were talking about earlier. It's called the Puzzle Bag. And they make it in a mini size that to me is very, very functional because you can wear it across body. Or you can take the strap off and use it as a a handheld. And it is nice enough and, you know, sharp enough that you could wear it out to dinner and no one would say anything. And I think that's just under 2000. Loewe has such cool shapes and it's very yeah. unique and very different. Talk about YSL. That's very hot right now. And I think it's getting much younger. What do you think? It is. And not to me, you know, it's troubling, right? When I was, you know, just in Miami and I see every 23 year old with a YSL wallet on chain. Right. Which I love a, I love a wallet on chain. I think everybody needs a wallet on chain because, you know, you can chuck it in a huge travel tote bag with all your shit in it. Or you can use it as a clutch, or you can throw it on with jeans, you can wear it to dinner, you can do whatever you want with it. But if everybody is wearing this bag at $1,500, like, what's the point in having it? Right. Right? Like, you don't want to have the same bag as 95 million people. Mm-hmm. And, and mind you, half of them are fake, but I do love YSL bags. They do make some really chic bags. There's a small one it's called the Toy Lulu, which I think is in like the 12 or 13 range last I checked, but it could have gone up by now. It's a beautiful bag. It's a great little crossbody. A fabulous bag, you'll have it forever. I just want to be clear Nolan sends me pictures of bags all the time. He wants me to get this bag, this bag, this bag, and this. And oh, you need this for summer. Now, I'm not saying you're not wrong. Okay. Let, let's just be clear. He sent me a bag that he wanted me to wear for Art Basel. I didn't, it didn't end up getting it. It was a Chloe bag, which is a very boho inspired kind of a, a brand that it has fringe and it has like a 70s vibe. It's, I love it, but I think I'm going to save it for my next holiday. But again, I love getting those suggestions because I'm a person who did not start out loving bags. Nolan had to really ingrain that in me. I still have, I would say about eight or nine right now. And I have very low to very high. So I have a nice range. Do I always want more? Yes. But I love the fact that Nolan comes in my closet and says, you don't wear this, you don't wear this, let's sell that and let's put that money into a better bag, you know, or let's trade up. That's how we keep the cycle going. That's what's good for the environment. Well, it is good for the environment, but it's also, let's be honest, it makes us feel less guilty. But like, honestly, you have a Chanel bag, I was just telling you earlier, that I haven't seen you wear it in a year, which means really, unless it has a sentimental connection for you, it needs to go. 
because you're not using it, right? And if you sell that now, you can probably get out of it exactly what you paid, if not a little bit more, because prices have gone up so much in the three years you've had that bag, you know, and it's probably the least used bag I see you with. So maybe that means it's time to go because we were talking about it, you know, maybe you need a small black bag that, you know, you can use casually or formally. And for me, like the best bag in that range right now, like is a tiny, tiny Hermes Kelly, but that's not really in the cards right now because the supply chain issues with Hermes, there's just not a ton and you're not going to pay double retail for the bag. Right, right. Let's talk about Marge Sherwood and Nancy Gonzalez. Well, Nancy Gonzalez is very expensive. You know, they start at about $3,000 and they go to about five, but they're beautifully made bags. And I like them because they're, for me, they're a great example of a brand that's very under the radar. Totally. They don't have a logo. They're all crocodile and they're beautiful. They look very expensive, but you never know. Like, you know, if you're in fashion, you know, but otherwise you're just saying that's a beautiful bag. You would never know. But Marge Sherwood is a brand. I first discovered it on Moda Oberondi and you sent me one of their bags at one point was like, like I'm obsessed with this bag and they do faux croc. They do a croc embossed leather and with great hardware. What I like about Marge Sherwood bags is I think yours was about four fifty, mm-hmm. something like that. And it, it, it is a beautifully made bag. It looks very expensive. But it was reasonable in the grand scheme of things because you know an Nancy Gonzalez bag of the same size would be thirty five hundred plus a Chanel bag of that size, four thousand. And your bestie Tom Ford, you don't even go there with me. I know. You do love a Tom Ford bag. You sent me one a couple of weeks ago. I do love a Tom Ford bag. That's a different price point. Again, Tom right. Ford bags are expensive. I, I, I don't, I very rarely see them under $2,000, but usually they're like 2500 3500 4000 I've seen them up to, you know, I've seen clutches of his go to 5000 and more expensive. But that's, again, that's a brand that many people don't think about for handbags. You know, it's one of those that like, if you love the brand, then maybe you buy one. And everyone knows how much I love Tom Ford. But when it comes to like big money handbags, like if you have unlimited resources or the ability to really splurge on a gorgeous bag. I do love Chanel bag, but the two most famous are called the classic flap, which is what most people think of when they think of a Chanel bag, which is the two chains with the quilting and the double C's with the flap. That bag, when I first was getting into fashion, I want to say it was like $4,200 for the jumbo size. Today, the jumbo size, I believe is at 9000 Wow. So the price is doubled. It's disgusting. They just did another 15% price increase. So I think it's honestly revolting. <laughs> um, I just think, no, I honestly just think it's offensive at this point. It's like you greedy fuckers, like just shut up <laughs> because it's just gross. And like I said to you tonight earlier, we were sitting and chatting and I was like, you know, why don't you have a classic Chanel bag? But, and then I said also, but wait, they've gone up again. And you're like, I'd rather just have an Hermes bag for that amount of money. Right. Like, right. Why would you pay that? My favorite Chanel bag is called the reissue, which also has two chains in the flap, but the, the, uh, the clasp is rectangular and gold. It says Chanel, but it's very small. You can't really tell it's a Chanel bag unless you know. But that's actually the same style of bag that Coco Chanel designed in 1955. It's very famous. In case anyone's wondering, yes, he is not reading off anyone, anything. Yes, he knows this shit by heart. Yes, he knows every fucking bag, every style, every everything. That I mean, I really trust his opinion because I it took me a long time to get out of Henry Bendel. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. I loved Henry Bendel because it was so edgy and different for Atlanta. They closed after 150 years, completely rude. You're like, this is not working for me. And uh, fine. Listen, it's not that and you know, Bendel makes great bags, coach makes great bags, Polen Stodd make great bags, but you personally on your own level tend to buy clothing of a different caliber. And so if you're wearing an Alaya dress, a Valentino dress, a, a Dior dress, or you know, an amazing Christopher Kane jacket or something, and you're wearing it, in, you know, that's a, those are expensive pieces and you're wearing it with a bag that was, you know, $300, it looks funky, right? Because usually the bag is the first thing you invest in. Right. So for people just starting out, if you haven't started, please Please make sure that you're spending what you can afford, getting what you like, but getting something that you're going to like for a couple of years. Don't get something so trendy just because everybody has it. And then don't sleep on a good work bag. Do not sleep. I cannot scream that from the mountaintops. I'll never forget the client I had who had a back sack. I almost smacked her across the face. I said, you look like a grad student. Fuck it. The bag. Okay. The back sack. 
you've graduated from that. Now, a nice man bag, like Jonathan has a beautiful leather bag sack that he takes when he travels. That is acceptable for a man, not for a woman. That's my opinion. I agree with that. Nolan, what's going to be your next bag? I honestly don't know. Um, Right now, I'm really buying a lot of shoes. Yeah. The next bag on my wish list, I would probably say I'm trying to buy less, but buy better. I love a Louis Vuitton monogram bag because I had one years ago and I got rid of it. And I really would like another one. Above that, I'd like a black shearling Telfar just because I use mine so much. And I also don't feel guilty when I really smack it around because it was like three <laughs> bucks. Right, right. Because that thing has taken a beating. And I think, you know, the end game, I would love to buy. Hmm, I honestly don't know. I'm kind of, I have a very extensive wish list, but most are far above my budget. I mean, Nolan sitting across from me tonight, he goes, I think I'm going to buy some more shoes. I was like, okay, girl, like, I, I'm sorry. Do you, <laughs> do, do you not have enough? I mean, he's like, I have these tennis shoes and these tennis shoes and these. Anyway. I want more Gucci. Like I have more pressing matters. I have to buy a new parka, which is going to, you know, be very expensive. And I also, you know, I love my Gucci loafers. So I want them in navy. I want them in brown. I want them in burgundy. Like that's a new bag right there. <laughs> right. So, you know, choose wisely. Key takeaways. Nolan is the bag Yoda. Duh. I would say come to me for help, but you should go to him for help because he certainly knows I can steer you in the right direction. I can help you figure out a good style for you, a good price point. But if you want scientific facts about bags, Nolan's your guy or your girl, whatever you want to say. But it has been so much fun catching up with you, Nolan. You have to come back and do a segment every month. I'm in because honestly, this is nice to be able to do it. You're so busy. It is starting to get on my nerves. It's getting on my nerves too. Trust me. <laughs> I mean, it's not the fact that we're in the same house right now. Okay, we'll get we'll get past that. But this is like the first time I've been able to catch you because, again, like I said, you're a lady about town. Only one of us cried from stress in the closet at the Loewe party at Art Basel, <laughs> and that was that would have been me. Nolan's like, I'm a working girl, and I was like, in between martinis, he's like, you could say that. I mean, I did have eight martinis the other night. That was a red flag. That's a red flag. We need to evaluate things. We need to figure no, out what's going on. I was telling on. my friend Anna, I said, listen, some call it a red flag. I call it a good time. <laughs> right, exactly. And on that note, we are going to sign off. Nolan, this has been incredible. Thank you so much for our bag lesson. We threw a lot of information at you, but a lot of this and the links are going to be in the show notes. And if you want something like this for Christmas, get your husband on board, get your p- partner on board, get your, you know, whoever you need to get this for you. Let's figure it out. Let's figure out what bag you're going to get and how you're going to get it. I am super excited for our Fashion Crimes Podcast Christmas holiday gift guide and giveaway. This is coming up on December 19th will be the final day. We have a lot of great brands that we're working with. I'm super excited. Nolan, damn glad to have you back. So glad to be back, darling. I mean, bestie, best gay, my stylist, personal stylist, celebrity stylist. He's got a lot of shit in the pipeline. Thank you so much for sparing this time with us. We love you. We will see you back here again when your schedule allows. My name is Holly Cates, your best friend in fashion that you never knew you needed and your favorite personal stylist, the only Holly you need to know. Follow me on social media, figure out what you need. Tell me what you want to hear about. Give me some feedback. Let me know you're out there. Sign up for our newsletter. Tell a friend, share it with somebody you love. My name is Holly Cates. This has been the Fashion Crimes Podcast and we are out.